Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back or if it's your first time to this channel then welcome. So today we are going to be talking about vegan pregnancy, nutrition and proper supplementation. So yes, I am pregnant. This is my first pregnancy. I've been plant-based for about five years now and things are going great. Second trimester has proven to be a lot more comfortable than first was. So if you guys want to know more about my journey thus far, I do have a couple of other vegan pregnancy videos that I've uploaded. I have a vegan pregnancy what I eat in a day video, everybody's favorite. And then I also have a halfway Q&A, so my 20 weeks halfway point. I asked all of you on Instagram to submit your vegan pregnancy questions. I answered those on my handy dandy iPhone. So that's there for you as well. You can find those in the description below. But let's move on. So if you guys like these plant-powered nutrition videos, give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Join us here at the Eat, Move, Rest fam. And make sure you've got that bell clicked. That'll turn on your notifications. You'll get alerted whenever we put out brand new videos here on this channel. As always, leave me some love in the comments below and leave me your questions or your suggestions. If you've got tweaks or different ideas for different supplements or different nutritional um, requirements, put them in the comments below. I would love to read through those. Like I said, I'm new to this. I'm no expert. I'm just simply sharing my journey for all of you guys and what's been working for me so far. So you can also follow daily Dusty and I on Instagram if you want to see maybe some sneak baby bump peeks and things like that. Follow us along at Aaron Stanzik and at DB Stanzik. Let's get going. So first I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the supplements I'm taking, and then second I'm gonna to talk to you about other things you can do for things like nausea, cramps, indigestion, bloating, heartburn. I have experienced all of these pregnancy symptoms, so I found a few little things that have helped me. I'm also gonna be sharing with you guys just some whole food plant-based way to get extra nutrition in as well, but let's start with the important stuff the bare bones, let's start with the supplements. I'm not taking too many. I'm not big on pills and vitamins and supplements because I like to try and get as much as I can from whole food sources. That being said, these are two vitamins that I take every day without fail. I have for a lot of years now because vegan or not, pregnant or not, anybody and everybody should be taking these vitamins. So number one is B12. B12 deficiency is super common, vegan or not, but it's especially hard to obtain from plants alone. So I do this B12 spray. It's by Garden of Life. It's called My Kind Organics. I love it because you spray it under your tongue. It tastes great and it helps with fast absorption. This is a methylated form, which is also better for improved absorption. Number two is vegan vitamin D3. This is the same brand. It's Garden of Life, My Kind Organics. And again, I like this because it's a spray and it's 2000 or it's 1000 I use. So I would recommend at least getting 2000 a day. So two sprays should do it. Even a little bit more when you're pregnant is great. So sometimes I bump this up when I feel like I'm catching a cold or getting a little sick. It doesn't hurt every once in a while to bump up your vitamin D3. So this is just another thing, you know, a lot of us aren't out in the sun, vegan or not, it's a lot of people, most people in fact, are D deficient. So get that in, it helps ward off depression, boost your immune system, it's great for building bones, which is awesome for baby. I'm not gonna go too far down the rabbit hole with like what all of these vitamins do. I'm just sharing what has helped me from the research I've read as far as what I should be getting for vegan pregnancy. So we also have just a generic um, vegan plant-based supplement video. I'll put the link to that below as well. So moving on, everybody has been asking, are you taking a prenatal vitamin? And the answer is yes, kind of. <laughs> so yes, I am taking a prenatal vitamin and the one that I'm taking is actually comprised of all whole plant foods, kind of like fruits and veggies, think dried and ground up and encapsulated, which is super awesome. It's organic, I will show it to you in a second, but first I'm just gonna talk about it. Um, so it's broken up into three doses, so you're supposed to take three pills a day, which is like, ugh, 
how am I going to remember that? So they do make a, a version that comes with just one capsule a day, but a lot of women find that, especially in the first trimester, starting on these prenatal vitamins, it can slow your digestion because of the mega boost of iron, and it can um, increase your nausea, things like that. So I actually, because I've been tracking my nutritional intake on Chronometer, get the Chronometer app, I'll put the link to that below, I've been tracking my nutrition to make sure I'm getting as much as I can from Whole Foods. So I've just been taking one of these a day kind of as a precaution to make sure that I'm getting everything I need because especially during the first trimester, I was really nauseous. A lot of days it was hard to even eat leafy greens. I'm getting better about it. Like I was at least putting them in green smoothies like you'll, you've probably heard if you follow my videos and Instagram. When it was difficult to be eating my normal foods, I just felt like the, the prenatal vitamin was super, super important. So if you're having a difficult time eating anything but refined white breads and plain cereals and bland foods and saltines and brothy water like I was, highly, highly recommend getting on a prenatal vitamin. It's full of that folate. And like I said, iron's super important. It also has, this one has vitamin D3 in it as well. So you'll wanna keep that in mind because if you're taking a D3 supplement on the side, this also contains it. All three of these, B12, D3, and the prenatal are all Garden of Life. I just love their stuff. Like I said, it's organic, non-GMO, super clean. Everything's made really whole, really pure. And those are the essentials. So then there is one more. This is another one that's super important. Again, um, pregnant or not, especially for vegans, this is an algae omega. So this is an omega-3 supplement, but instead of getting it from stinky, smelly, gross fish oil, we're going straight to the source because fish get their omega-3 fatty acids from the algae that they consume. So we're cutting out that middleman like us plant-powered eaters like to do and we're going straight to the source. This is algae omega. And the important thing about it is a lot of times we can get our omega-3 fatty acids, but EPA form and the DHA forms are super hard to get. This is another good one to take while pregnant. It can just help ensure that your baby's brain is developing healthily and it's also great for your hair, skin, and nails, and your own healthy heart function. So I also recommend looking into an algae omega. So those are the bare bones. Those are the supplements that I'm taking on this vegan pregnancy journey. It's been working out great for me. Now we're gonna move on to some of the more like, not exactly whole foods, I wouldn't say, but they're like whole food supplements. So they're like not a pill, but they're not a whole food, but they're like basically a whole food. So number one is a lot of pregnant women, a lot of vegans, you can see how these are crossing the lines. So if you are a guy watching, this video is totally applicable to you in many ways. So a lot of vegans are deficient in iodine, a lot of people in general are, but especially when pregnant, it's an important mineral to have. So this is the best way to get your iodine. A lot of people say iodized salt, but from what I've read from Dr. Greger on nutritionfacts.org, it's actually pretty difficult to get the amount that you need from just iodized salt. The best option is going to be your sea veggies. Number one, super important to find a clean source. I really, really love this Maine Coast sea vegetables. I get it at Whole Foods. You can also get it on Amazon. I'll link it below. This is USDA organic. And in just one tablespoon, you can get 330% iodine. So that's pretty awesome. And for any of you women out there who are struggling with thyroid issues, it might have to do with an iodine deficiency. This also has vitamin B6. It's a vitamin that you can take if you're feeling that first trimester nausea in your pregnancy. So it's cool that that's in there as well. So what do you do with it? Number one, the only thing I really ever do with it is sprinkle it on my salads and mix it in really good, like with the guacamole and everything, and you can't even taste it. It's like, it's obviously a little bit salty, but not too fishy if you mix it in. Number two, I've talked to many, many people so far now who have said they've had major aversions to greens, like their leafy green salads during pregnancy, especially during first trimester, and that's me to a T. So I've had to get kind of creative with getting my greens in, making sure I can get those minerals, the iron, the calcium, the protein, everything that greens supply us. I'm such a huge greens lover, so I was kind of hard on myself at first, but 
I'm getting used to it and I'm getting back into my salads, but green smoothies every day with Daily Green Boost. This is kind of a smaller company that I found on Instagram. Um, a lot of the people I had been following used this and it's raw vegan, organic, gluten-free, it's kosher, what more could you ask for? And it's not any kind of crazy concoction. All that it actually is is barley grass juice powder. So I recommend this brand, Daily Green Boost. They're awesome, I'll link it below as always. That's been a lifesaver and like I said, a tablespoon in a smoothie or sometimes I'll just pour a tablespoon in a tall ice water and mix it in and it's kind of like a alkali, it just, it just looks and feels like a super cleansing alkalizing drink and it tastes pretty good. Next up, after punching things in on chronometer for a while, I had been starting to notice that my selenium was low and I've known this in the past but I kind of got to slacking on it but essentially all that you need to get your daily dose of selenium is one special nut, the Brazil nut, that's right. So we buy these in bulk, either on Amazon sometimes, you can get them raw, which is the best form, and they're one of those nuts that you don't actually have to soak. So this is how big they are. They are pretty big. All you need is one a day to get your dose of selenium. So if you want to cover your bases, vegan or not, selenium with the Brazil nut. Next up, we're going back to the omega-3 fatty acids. These are going to be like your ALA omega-3s. So flaxseed number one, if you put a tablespoon of flaxseed or number two, chia seed, either of these tablespoon into your morning smoothie like I do in my green smoothies, it's going to give you almost everything you need as far as omega-3 requirements for the day. Now being pregnant, you might want to bump it up a little bit, make yourself an afternoon chia pudding, get in those healthy fats, they're going to be so great for baby, they're going to be so great for you, minimize those stretch marks, help your hair, skin, and nails, so flax and chia are the best sources as far as seeds go for those omega-3s, and if you like to eat nuts and snack on nuts, almonds are great, but walnuts are where it's at for omega-3s, they're awesome for your brain, get those walnuts in. And on that note, healthy fats, nuts, let's go to nut butters. That's one craving I have had is an, a good nut butter with bananas. It's such a great combination, so, so delicious. Anyways, I just thought I would sneak these in and share with you guys two of my very, very favorite nut butter brands. So number one is Maranatha. These, this one is raw vegan almond butter. It's organic, so what I'll do is just slice a banana, spread some of this on top, and sprinkle it with cinnamon, and it's a great snack. And the other one is Artisana Organics, another great brand, and this one's got raw walnut butter and cashew butter in it. So this one is a super healthy and delicious combo. Again, same thing with that. That's pretty much all I do with it is put it with my bananas. The last food supplement that I would recommend is Nutritional Yeast Flakes. My favorite brand is this Sari Foods because it contains zero synthetic vitamins. That's super important. A lot of times you'll find, and this is true of fol folate in general, a lot of times, um, you know, being pregnant, you're gonna be told by anyone and everyone to bump up your folate. So there's a difference between taking a folic acid supplement and getting your folate. Folic acid is a synthetic form that does cause side effects. I can place a link below to an article on that. Anyways, that was enough for me to, number one, find a nutritional yeast that does not have synthetic B vitamins. And number two, get your folate from your whole foods. Greens are so, so high in folate. So make that green smoothie, make that green juice, make that green salad. Another great thing about nutritional yeast is, again, it's really high in all of your B vitamins. And your B vitamins are super, super important. Um, especially, like I said earlier, vitamin B6. Now in two heaping tablespoons of this, it has 560% vitamin B6. So B6, again, is that one vitamin that's supposed to help with your nausea. My nausea was pretty much unstoppable, but it doesn't hurt to try. And this stuff goes great on salads, great on baked potatoes, on rice, 
I blend all kinds of cheesy concoctions with it, so get some nutritional yeast in there. Great for your pregnancy. Okay, so what about those crazy, annoying, nagging pregnancy symptoms that are driving you nuts, especially in your first trimester, maybe also in your third trimester? The number one thing has been the nausea. So it's gone away for me. It took till honestly about week 18 or 19 to finally feel like myself again and get my appetite back to normal. So it was far beyond, or a few weeks beyond first trimester. But if you're experiencing nausea, the number one thing I would recommend is ginger root, the whole ginger root. Juicing it, we do ginger shots that Dusty has kindly been able to make me. I like to put it in our green smoothies as well as turmeric. These are awesome, awesome, awesome. Another option would be a ginger tea. So this is a USDA organic form. And this is my favorite thing to have after dinner, slightly before bedtime, just to calm and ease my stomach. It's done amazing things. I love it. And also, as far as nausea goes, I just found that super high water content fruits helped a lot. Watermelon was really, really great. It helped me out so much. And just any kind of juicy summer fruit. I'm lucky being pregnant in summer. I think it would be a little bit more difficult in the winter, but another thing that's helped me is just super icy cold water and like chomping on crushed ice or having a really ice cold smoothie or slushy concoction. Moving on, pregnancy symptom number two, muscle cramps. Charlie horses that wake me up in the middle of the night because I feel like somebody's murdering my calves. <laughs> if you've experienced these, then you know what I'm talking about. It's like right up by the leg pit, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But anyways, a couple of things have helped me a lot. Number one, you want to bump up your potassium. So my number one way to do that would be ripe speckled bananas in the form of smoothies or just whole how it is. Like I said, put that nut butter on, get them down or make a, a almond butter sandwich with bananas wedged in between, get that potassium in. Another food that most many people don't realize has a high amount of potassium is watermelon. So for example, today I put in my watermelon and I ate close to 400 calories, which was about um, a half of a large watermelon. I just love it so, so much. But that was 22% potassium. So potassium will help a lot with those cramps. Another thing I would recommend is natural calm. So this is magnesium. Give you a look at that. So this is a non-sweetened form, which is kind of nice. It's an anti-stress drink, which is also great. So what we do, Dusty and I both use it. Fill it up at nighttime, just a small glass of water, mix it in and it'll be cloudy white. You'll wanna wait until it, it turns clear before you drink it. It's slightly effervescent, which I kind of like, and it's really, really great for reducing muscle strain and relaxing your muscles, relaxing your mind, relaxing your body, helping you to sleep more soundly. So magnesium and potassium, get those in for your muscle cramps. Pregnancy symptom number three, digestion and elimination. Um, it's been a real struggle. It was a lot more difficult for me a few weeks ago. Like I said, you jump into the prenatal vitamins and all of a sudden all of the extra iron and the extra just everything kind of bombards your system and it kind of stops things up. On top of that, you've got a rush of new hormones entering into your body and that too will slow down and make things sluggish. On top of that, the bigger your baby bump grows, the more there's gonna be that compression in there. So all of these combined makes for not the greatest digestion. Things just tend to slow down. Number one thing is water. This was hard for me though because I couldn't drink lukewarm water anymore. All I ever used to drink was lukewarm water. Don't ask me what happened, but it had to be super, super ice chilled cold with ice in it or I wouldn't drink it, so get your water in. If it needs to be cold, make sure you've got ice water or like a, a thermos or a canteen to keep your water cold with you on the go. Get that water in. And on top of that, watermelon. Watermelon has helped me tremendously. My digestion is back on track thanks to watermelon. And one other summer fruit that's helped a lot has been peaches and or nectarines. 
something about them just helps push things through a lot more easily. So if, if all else fails, say like when Dusty and I were in LA for a full week and not only was I going through the, my first trimester woes, on top of that we were not eating our normal diet, so things were way out of whack. So this is something I always, always travel with, pregnant or not, because I always get backed up. This is Smooth Move Tea. It's all organic, it's non-GMO. The brand is Traditional Medicinals and I love it. I will say it works really well, so be careful. <laughs> know what you're getting into. So all it has in it is senna root or senna leaf, which is the primary you know, thing that, that makes you go. So this is safe for pregnancy. I have done my research. I wouldn't get into the, the rhythm or routine of using it constantly, but I would say I maybe use it every few months or so when I've had you know, a string of days together where things are not moving. And it looks like you have a baby bump when you're only a few weeks pregnant and there is no real bump, it's just food in there. So this can help get things moving along. If all else fails, it works like a charm. The best thing to do, by the way, is to drink it right before bed, sleep on it, and you should wake up and go. Otherwise, you might experience a little bit of gas or bloating or sometimes stomach cramps, but if you sleep it off, you probably won't notice. So kind of the last major pregnancy symptom that I've been experiencing is heartburn. Dusty struggled with it on and off for years. It was part of his plant-based story and what converted him and, and made him never want to go back was that his heartburn was gone. And I never knew how difficult it was because I had never in my life experienced what I would have considered heartburn. But once I had it, I knew. So first trimester, I'm not sure why. Usually they say like, as you get bigger and the baby is pushing up more, then you tend to get more of that reflux and heartburn. But I was experiencing it early on and now I'm not. So I would, number one, I would suggest eating smaller meals more sporadically throughout the day. Don't ever let yourself get too hungry. And like I say, don't ever let yourself get too hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Halt. <laughs> but besides that, just small meals spaced evenly throughout the day helps a lot rather than massive meals because the massive ones are the ones that has made things start to gurgle up for me. Especially at dinner time, I'm a big dinner time eater. So I've really had to make those meals a lot smaller and a little bit more bland. So I will say on that note, things that are too sugary, especially refined sugars are a no-go. Um, too salty, too oily and fatty, all of these things are gonna contrib contribute to heartburn. So on top of that, I would also suggest eating dinners earlier. I've been eating probably two hours earlier than what I was used to. Maybe eating dinner ideally around 7 and then we go to bed around 11. You could even eat as early as 6. The earlier the better. I know it can be difficult when you're pregnant because you just get hungrier and hungrier, but if you're going to eat a late night snack, make it something that's like a little bit more calming and not too crazy high in fat or salt, sugar, and oil. SOS, salt, oil, and sugar. One other thing after meals has helped me is to stay upright. So I have this thing that's been training me with my posture. I'll put the link to it below. You may have seen if you did my Instagram giveaway. It's called the Upright Trainer. So anyways, it's been perfect timing because when you're pregnant, you don't want to dump into your lower back because you can have more lower back pain than you need. But it also helps with digestion. So if you eat a meal, try not to lay down right afterwards because that has really caused heartburn for me. And if I just stay upright, Moving around, walking around, or sitting at my desk, I'm usually pretty golden, but it's the minute I lay down or even like bend over to like clean up the floor, then all of a sudden it starts the cascade. So just try those tips and tricks to minimize the reflux. So I guess that pretty much covers all of my pregnancy nutrition and supplements. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. I will say, going back again to the fact that eating whole plant foods in their natural state is going to be the best thing for you and for your baby. Whole plant foods, fruits, veggies, nuts, seeds, legumes, grains, beans, you name it. I would say the most important would be those greens, grains, and beans to be getting in those proteins, calciums, irons, and all of that good stuff, getting in all those minerals. So make sure you're making those big Buddha bowls at dinner time with your 
black beans and quinoas and brown rices, your steamed broccoli, steamed kale, get all those in. And I will put a link below to a super, super helpful video that we have for you guys. It's our top seven foods to eat daily for optimal nutrition. If you can get those in all day, every day, and take your prenatal vitamin like I'm doing, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Many women are out there just taking pregnancy as an excuse to eat pizza and refined flours, refined sugars. It's not gonna make you feel great, so try your best to just stay on track. Okay, you guys, you know the drill, so if you like this vegan pregnancy nutrition and supplements video, give it a thumbs up, and like I said in the beginning, if you haven't already joined us here at the Eat, Move, Rest fam, hit that subscribe button and click that bell on so you'll get notified whenever we put out new videos here. Leave me some love in the comments below. Let me know how you're feeling if you're pregnant or what your experience was, if you have more advice as far as nutrition or supplements goes. I am all ears because I'm not a professional. This is my story, this is my journey. I love having you guys along for it. Follow me daily, follow Dusty daily to see what we're up to, how Baby S is doing on Instagram, at Aaron Stanzik and at DB Stanzik. And until next time, you guys, you know the drill. Eat, move, rest, your best. Bye.